Hello you lovely lot and welcome to a new video. Today I have one final Arteza review for you and I'll be trying out a few different supplies. I have the 48 set of Inconic pens, the hardback watercolour book, the 28 set of watercolour tubes and the 24 set of woodless watercolour pencils. These were all sent to me for free from Arteza, this video is not sponsored, I haven't been paid to say anything and as per usual if I like something I will say so, if I don't like something I will say so. So we will start off with the watercolour book, which you can see me sketching in right from the start. You get two of these in a pack, and they are sized at 8.3 by 11.7 inches. They don't seem to be on the UK Arteza site at the moment, I am looking at the UK site because I am based in the UK, but obviously Arteza is a US based company, and so I'm reading off all these prices in pounds, but obviously they will vary depending on where you are. But these actually are on Amazon UK at the moment for $26.99. They're cold press and one side of the paper is textured and the other is smooth. They're acid free and the covers are hardback and linen bound. They also have a ribbon bookmark so you can easily find your place. And in the back of the book you get a plastic wallet which you can keep like notes and little sketches and stuff in. In terms of presentation, I think Arteza packaging always looks nice and I appreciate a sketchbook or watercolour pad that doesn't have a ring binding because I'm left-handed so I have a bad history with ring-bound notebooks anyway, <laughs> but also I feel like you want a sketchbook that lays flat for ease of use. So this does that, which is great. Unfortunately for the paper itself, I personally didn't like it. This paper, like I said, is cold press, but with one side of each page being textured and the other side smooth, to me the smooth side felt more like hot press, which I'm not personally a fan of. The textured surface was preferable to me, and I dislike the smooth side to the point of not using it at all, so straight off the bat half the book would have just been wasted on me. It didn't feel like my pencil or watercolour took to the surface well, and it had odd bumps across many of the pages which made smooth sketching difficult. I'm not sure if this was an intentional part of the paper, but it was kind of across most of the pages, but not all of them, so there was inconsistency and it just didn't look like it was meant to be there. The smooth side also felt somehow chalky and just not very pleasant on my hands. Maybe I'm oversensitive, but I didn't like the feel of it. The paper is £110 and it feels quite sturdy, however it didn't take particularly kindly to erasing, so I tried to keep that to a minimum because I did initially start off with a different sketch, I didn't like it, I tried to erase it, the paper did not like that, so I just gave up and moved on to another page because I couldn't be bothered to deal with that. I also typically use very low tack washi tape to mask off the borders of my paintings when I'm working, and it usually comes off with no problem in my experience, but on this paper it actually, the paper tore itself up with the tape, and so that wasn't a great finish. <laughs> so it looks strong, but it's surprisingly fragile. Next up are the paints. In this set you get 24 colours in 12 mil tubes, and they retail at $26.99 currently. Again, they're nicely presented with a cardboard box with the tubes in plastic trays inside that are easy to remove. Each colour has a name, which is always handy when you're swatching, and they also have an indicator on them of how light fast they are, which is very important if you plan to use these for art that you want to sell or display. In the particular case of these, they follow the ASTM standard, which grades from 1 to 3, with 3 indicating that an image created with these products will last for 15 to 50 years, and a 1 indicating that it will last 100 years or more on average. Most of these colours were graded at a 3, with 2 colours at a 2. So maybe don't use these on a piece that you plan to pass down as a family heirloom. I would say that these paints are good for beginners or students who don't want to use a lot of expensive high quality supplies when producing multiple pieces. Some of these paints were flaky right from when I first opened them, as you can see when they're placed in the palette, and they did crack extremely fast on the palette, which means that they would be difficult to reuse or to store inside a portable palette that you were carrying around. The paper felt like it absorbed the water quickly, which made it difficult to fill large areas smoothly. I like to lay down a light coloured wash before I start with the rest of the colours, and it just felt kind of frustrating to do this because it felt like as soon as I laid the colour down it had gone into the paper, and had to keep sort of reloading the brush and going over it again to get a smooth finish. 
It also feels like there's quite a lot of filler in these paints, and for the price I would hope for more pigment. So in terms of which product I enjoyed using the most out of what I received, these watercolour paints were my favourite. They were fairly enjoyable, but they didn't wow me. Thirdly, there was the watercolour pencils. This is the 24 set of watercolour woodless pencils, retailing at $16.99. Due to the way these are made, they're designed to last much longer than normal watercolour pencils since they don't just have a coloured core, they are entirely made of core. <laughs> I can't vouch for the longevity since I only use them once so I don't actually know how long they would last when compared to standard watercolour pencils, otherwise I would tell you. I mostly use them to accent the watercolour paint that I had already laid down and to deepen colours in certain areas of the illustration. They were nice and vibrant, and the colours were very saturated. I did also like the idea of the pencils having no wood, because obviously less waste and you get more use out of them. But some of them felt scratchier than others, and when I applied water, the colour didn't seem to blend out as well as I would have liked, and left some residue of the original marks on the paper. Lastly, I used the fine liners. These are the Inconic fine liners, which come in a set of 48. They currently retail on the UK site at $34.99. They come nicely presented in a tin with two plastic trays inside. The ink is water-based, the nibs are classed as extra fine, so they're 0.4mm in size and the ink is non-toxic. The barrel is triangular, so if your desk is a bit wonky like mine, they won't just roll away when you put them down. I personally prefer hexagonal barrels, but that's just me being fussy. I used these mostly to ink the illustration after the painting was done, since with these being water-based, if I inked the artwork and then applied paint over the top of it, I would end up with a really nice mess. So I decided to use them afterwards, which is not my usual drawing method, but obviously I could paint over my pencil lines and then use the pens afterwards to just accentuate all the details that I wanted to bring out. However, I did try adding water to them intentionally just to see what happened, and I got some quite interesting results. Some of them blended out better than others and produced a rich colour which added a nice accent to my illustration, as you can see with the hair. So it takes some fine control, it is quite difficult to kind of control where the ink is going when you do this, but I think if you practice you could get some interesting results. However, after a couple of passes I found the end of the nib started to become fuzzy with the paper starting to lift, and I'm not sure whether this is a result of the pens themselves or the paper, but I'd recommend trying not to layer them too much because it's gonna create a little bit of a messy result. In addition, while some of these pens laid down ink smoothly, others were scratchy as if they were low on ink right out of the box, which was not very enjoyable to work with. As with the watercolour paints, the quality felt quite inconsistent. There were some that drew really nicely and smoothly and felt really enjoyable to use, and there were others that just kind of contrasted with that quite strongly. Overall, though there were some aspects of this process that I enjoyed, I came out of this experience feeling like these products underwhelmed me. They weren't terrible, but they were okay. They were average, and personally as a consumer I feel like they were overpriced. At their current retail price, the products I received came out at a total of around £106, and if I had paid £106 for these, I would probably not be particularly impressed. And this isn't me just trying to be cranky for the sake of it. I genuinely want to enjoy trying new things and finding new products that I can recommend to you guys, because obviously you don't want to be spending money on things that won't work out for you. And though I implore you to get out of your comfort zone and try new things, I also don't want to be the reason that you perhaps spent money on things that will not be right for the way that you work. I believe it's very important to be honest about the things I try. Just because I receive something for free, I'm not going to give it a glowing review. Whether I paid for something or whether I got it for free, I'm going to tell you completely and truthfully what I think of it, and hopefully it can help you out in some way. I will be doing another video on this at a later date, but I just wanted to put that in there that I'm not saying, oh I don't like this just to, you know, be difficult, <laughs> but just because I believe the most important thing when your viewers are trusting you is to be honest and upfront, and that's what I'm trying to do. Now for the legal bit. 
In the description box below you can find a 10% off code which you can use on the Arteza website to get 10% off as the name suggests. And if you buy anything through my affiliate links in the description box I will earn 15% commission. If anyone would like to know the story behind this illustration, because you probably know by now that it's inevitable that I'm going to tell you, I will be talking more about him in my Let's Talk D&D series, but I will give you a quick summary for now. So he is my half-orc sorcerer called Ez, who I play in a campaign called Beyond Skeletons, and this is a Ghost of Saltmarsh campaign with a lot of extra stuff added in. Our DM has done an amazing job with it. and. Ez used to be the captain of a merchant vessel called the Blue Morpho, which was named after a type of butterfly with blue wings. Or they're not technically blue, they just look blue in the light because you learn something new every day. But anyway, I decided to draw Ez with a quite literal Blue Morpho on his face because I just really like that mental image. I really like characters with butterflies on them and flowers on them and stuff like this, so it didn't quite match up to the mental image that I had of how I wanted this piece to turn out, so at some point I would like to redraw this digitally and really kind of capture what I had in my mind. But I really wanted to draw kind of like a soft image of Ez, because a lot of the time when I draw him he's looking stupid in some way, and I wanted to capture a softer side of him. This image is actually now outdated already because he has short hair now, as is the nature of D&D, because as soon as you draw your character something changes. But I'm pretty happy with how this turned out, I'm happy with how his expression came out and the detail in the butterfly and so on. So I did do some cheeky editing because his face ended up a little bit smushed in the original painting because I'm not very good at drawing flat because I find it hard to judge the perspective. I'm used to drawing at a Cintiq on a very steep angle, so that's my excuse for that. So I did edit his face a little bit just to lengthen it, but apart from that it, the final scan pretty much looks like the painting itself. So yeah, if you'd like to know more about Ez, check out my social media because I draw him a lot and I yell about him a lot. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the process of seeing this painting come together. I hope that this was helpful to you. I also decided to try filming this in a different way to most of my traditional media videos, so opposed to a time lapse, I decided to record in real time from lots of different angles so that you can kind of get a better idea maybe of how the pieces coming together, or the different methods that I'm using. I will likely not be doing any more product reviews because of reasons uh, which I'm going to discuss in another video, so that's going to be a thing to talk about. But yeah, I hope this video was helpful to you, and please let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, if I can help you out with anything. I just want to help people out when I try out products, and to assist them in making the right decisions for them. So. Thank you for watching, really hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time. Bye!